start consulting the sorcerer, Satan began to appear in his bedroom. You see, he was free until he yielded to the authority of the devil. And the consequence was that he gave Satan space. Satan now had a theater to operate in his life, even though he was born again. And when Satan appeared, he tried to use his authority. I bind you! And Satan did not respond to his authority because he had violated the first spiritual law, which is the law of servitude. In the spiritual realm, are you with me? Okay, you, you don't understand. I'm saying that as a human being, you must serve something. Whether you serve God, if you are not serving God, you will, nonetheless, you will still serve another entity. And the way that is going to happen is if you yield yourself as a servant to obey. It's as simple as that. Satan will now legitimately have authority over your life. And he will begin to manipulate your destiny just because you yielded as a servant to obey it was in the experience of this intercessor that i discovered that if people go to the devil on the issues that they are supposed to go to god about they make satan their god it is in that brother's life that i discovered that that principle was efficacious because the moment he turned to satan he made satan his god and Satan is a legalistic entity that will take advantage of any space that you provide for him. Hallelujah. Please help me tell your neighbor, give Satan no place. In my meticulous study of the Bible, I discovered six ways by which people open their space to the devil hallelujah six ways by which men open their space to the devil and if we are going to undo the devil's authority here tonight so that people can enjoy the liberty that is in christ jesus then we we'll have to address these grounds that have been afforded the enemy to operate in the lives of men. Number one. This one is common. It's a general one. It is not hidden. The first on my list is called sinful acts and habits. A sinful act and a sinful habit enthrones the devil, gives him occasion to begin to plunder your life. Hallelujah. I remember those days while we were still on campus. It was the student affairs department that was responsible for assigning rooms to people that were eligible to rooms and so you might end up having a roommate with a different philosophy of life and once upon a time in my room i was the only born again christian the rest of the guys were gangsters in fact they said there's no need for us to lock the door. No need for us to have a key on the door. That people, nobody can steal from them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you can be coming into the room and you see them having sex. Meanwhile, they will not even, they are not bothered that you came. These things continued for a whole session. Few years ago, I saw the same person. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. He is trusting God for a child. Because he got married to a lady and the lady could not give birth for him. He discarded the lady 
and felt okay no that he is potent is a lady that is went and got another lady married another lady and the second lady too has not been able to give him children then he located me and asked me say pastor he has a challenge the challenge is that god has refused to give him children now that his his state of childlessness has nothing to do with god he gave satan space don't think that you are living in immorality that satan will allow you to finish immorality he wants to give you a mark so that even if you give your life to christ he will still be taking your name to heaven that there is a legality that was satisfied when you were under his dominion that god cannot reverse hallelujah i say hallelujah satan wants to give you a mark and i've seen so many people many many years while we're on campus coming to look for me what is the problem satan has started exploiting their lives now they want to be reasonable now they want to shut out the devil and focus on god but yet satan left them with a mark paul warned us beforehand he said give satan this terrible being that is looking for occasion to destroy you paul says give him no place because you may not recover from his mark people looking for children hallelujah a lady they brought her to me in lagos and when they brought her to me i asked her what is the problem she was weeping weeping profusely why are you weeping she said she needs a child she needs a child she needs a child hallelujah before the prayer i said okay i'll pray for you i'll pray for you god will god will do it but before the prayer she she herself stopped me he said wait she knows she did wrong that when she was on campus she would go out with this man go out with that man and the implication of violating the principles of god is that there's a demon of barrenness that she contacted and when people go out and contact things it ends on the table of pastor meanwhile paul says give satan no place sinful acts are the first openers that exposes a man to demonic activity are you with me you see if i say what i'm hearing in the spirit maybe it's for me maybe it's not for the congregation you find okay let me say it there is somebody in this hall on this field is a female this female that i see she masturbated away her virginity that's what i saw now through masturbation she disvirgined herself by masturbation now the devil wants to put you in a situation where he will be the lord of your life and he will determine what happens to you and what does not happen to you i see many people bound here under the yoke of pornography you know initially when you started it was not bondage you could decide when to watch and when not to watch but a time came when a spirit was added to your adventure the capacity and the ability of your will to decide not to was no longer recognized because a spirit is involved now initially when you begin to go into treacherous waters the devil will allow you entry and exit without putting a mark upon you but at the point that satan attaches a spirit to your life your will no longer has the authority to determine a change of proceedings you are bound to that particular addiction because there is a spirit that has been attached to ensure 
that you bow down to that kind of bondage. Sinful acts is the first way to allow demons into your space. Number two, we have what is called soul games. Um, you know, in modern times, there are books on divination. There are books on witchcraft. Pamphlets, very simple books. And I found people, many people, especially in western Nigeria, that felt, is there anything wrong studying along the line of divination? Studying along the line of witchcraft? It's just, just to know it. You just need to know it. So that maybe you'll be enlightened to be able to understand how to tackle it. Many have exposed their souls through such reading. There's someone that read a book on divination. And the book is so user friendly. It's so life applicable. Such that if you finish reading chapter 1, there's a workbook behind things that you'll be asked to do if you finish that book and you do all fulfill all the items in the workbook by the time you arrive chapter six a spirit of divination will start appearing to you i've seen people that read books and became slaves to satan because they sought knowledge in the regions of darkness hallelujah i say hallelujah there are people in our midst here tonight you were exposed to things and the things that you were exposed to has opened you up to a spirit that you are trying to get rid of it is soulish exposure there is a game are you with me it's, it's a board game it's called an Uji board. If your university library is up to date, you are likely to have an Uji board in the library. The Uji board is a game that a spirit comes to play with you. A familiar spirit comes to play that game with you. That game is a game of divination. The game is predictive. So when you begin to play the game, initially you are the only one playing but in the middle of the game you will discover that there's a spirit playing with you my friend was giving me an instance because he saw the uji board in university of ibadan library and the game is easy to play it's just that at some point you will collide with a familiar spirit and you'll be amazed at the accuracy of the familiar spirit when the spirit comes and takes the other side you will be amazed oh my if you know the name of your grandfather that that spirit can actually spare the name of your grandfather and you begin to see supernatural things happening unknown to you you have your soul has wandered into dark territory you will never be the same again after playing that game now several other people here maybe you practice bible turning say bible if it's janet that took it let it turn turn that is the practice of divination it has opened your soul to the regions of darkness there is no way you can do that and be a normal person because when you seek in the hands of the devil something that you should only seek from god you make satan your god In a particular church in Zaria, some, somebody did something wrong. And then the head pastor of the church was the one that gathered a committee for Bible turning. Uh, Bible, if it's Pastor Joe that took the money, turn, 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 turn. And another minister of the gospel came into the midst of the committee and ask the head pastor what are you doing the pastor said this thing has worked before the reason why there was a 
re-implementation of the policy was that previously it was consulted and it worked before. Please help me tell your neighbor the fact that it is working doesn't mean it is God. Those are things that expose your soul. And when your soul has been exposed in that particular way, you are a carrier of a demonic liability. Satan will all is looking for space, is looking for occasion, is looking for an opportunity. And ministers of the gospel, before you begin to pray for someone, take some time to interview them and find at what point. The person explored the regions of darkness. Because if that is the case, there is a defined pattern by which such a person can be delivered from the influence of the devil. Soul games. Hallelujah. There's, there's a young man the other time. He likes witchcraft things. He's not a witch, but he likes the, he likes the things. He, He likes it. And because he likes it, a real witch now enticed him and called him and said, See, you have powers. You have spiritual powers, but you are not exploring it. I said, No, he wants to explore power. He likes power. Hallelujah. And they gave him something to put in his pocket. And they called it the stone of Solomon. The stone of Solomon. They said, You put that in his pocket. Anytime he wants favor, he wants people to do things for him, let him put his hand in his pocket and touch the stone. Touch it. So as he's touching the stone, he's manipulating the people to favor him. So he was liking it. It was as if the thing was working initially. He wanted money. He touched the stone. The person gave him money. The person said, car, I don't have money. Oh. But the person got money for him. He said, ah, this stone is working now. He, he, he began to touch the stone, began to touch the stone. Hallelujah. After a while, he looked for the stone. He didn't find it again. It's a demon that started appearing to him. By connecting with that stone, he was actually drawing power from that demon. Now that he was under the influence of the demon, there was no need for the stone to stand as a barrier. The demon began to appear to him. For a very long time, he could not say it because the demon said, if you say it, you die. Hallelujah. That is why that person that came here with charm, I don't know whether you came to test power or you came to check if Jesus' power is more than the one you are carrying. You see, if you leave this place without submitting that charm, you are on your way out of this life. This call I gave is to secure your life, to secure your destiny. You don't have much time left. I bring one into you. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Wickedness. Wickedness is one of the tools through which doors can be opened to the devil. And when we say an act is wicked, it means it is done against somebody that has no capacity to defend himself. When you find a vulnerable person and you oppress that person, wickedness is one of the ways to open the doors to the devil. For instance, if there is someone here that you committed abortion, it's an act of wickedness. That person you killed did not have any means of defending himself defending herself abortion is an act of wickedness and when you are a partaker of wickedness if you don't know how to restitute that position effectively you become a customer for demons and for devils satan is looking for place the bible calls him he's like a roaring lion looking for who to devour he needs to look because not everybody provides space for him Paul says that we should give Satan 
no place. I've seen a lady before in the city of Kano. And she came for us to pray for her. Because she was three years into marriage and was looking for the fruit of the womb desperately. And while we wanted to pray for her, a vision of the spirit came. And we saw something like a balloon. And then there were two, two sticks of broom. The sticks of broom pricked the, ba the balloon and busted it. And the Lord said, abortion. 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 Hallelujah. Unknown to her. Because in the vision. Are you still with me? In the vision. We also saw that when she was aborting. There was a demon that was taking the blood. And it is that demon that took the blood from her. As evidence that was blocking her womb from taking in subsequently. And now she had come to the pastor. But when she came to us for prayer, she did not say there was an issue of abortion in the background. I've seen that many people can come for prayer, but they don't come with sincerity. If God doesn't open your eyes as a pastor to see the things that they are hiding, you will be impotent in ministering to them. We have to let, lead her through an elaborate confession in order for us to secure God's mercy enough to ask God to stretch forth his hand again. And that's why I have realized in my experience in ministry that if you find someone that is not blatantly sincere, they never get free from the bondage of the devil. Your way out of satanic bondage begins with engaging the virtue of sincerity. The Bible says, Whoso covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. There's a protocol to securing mercy from God. And in many instances, especially as it has to do with wickedness, if you have not yet secured mercy, those demons will still be very, very intact. If you are still here tonight, say amen. amen. Number four. Drugs. 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 It was in Makode here. I was um, in the office when a young man was brought to me. And the man... The guy was saying strange things, strange things, strange things. Ha. So I said, these things you are saying, who is telling you? He said, it's the spirit that possessed his grandfather. That the spirit has come to him. The spirit told him that he's the one that is the chosen one. Okay, you are the chosen one. He said, yeah. He now told me that he even has a prophecy for me. That Do I want to hear the prophecy? I said, no, I'm not interested in his prophecy. He should keep his prophecy. Hallelujah. That, that, that the spirit has been revealing things to him. He even revealed about me. That he wants to give me a promise. I said, hold it there, hold it there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I now asked him, how do you, if you want this, your spirit to be activated, the presence of the spirit to be activated, how do you activate it? He said, he needs to smoke. When he smokes, then the presence of the spirit will become conspicuous. So the entry point into that realm was to use drugs. Are you here? To use what? Drugs. Now, these things I'm saying is not strange to some of you. The Lord sent me to you so that the yoke you carry can be destroyed. But, if you lose the virtue of sincerity this night, that's why I gave that announcement. Only people that are naked and sincere will find mercy of God. Hallelujah. Drugs. So he goes and sniffs a stick of cigarette. And when he does that, the influence of that spirit becomes tangible. Then he begins to give words like insight. He says, all right, I, I see that. Okay, that accident, I saw it before it happened. The entry point was drugs. It was when Anand traveled eventually to South America. Anand saw some people. There is something they sniff. It's called crack. When they sniff crack. Hallelujah. 
the person become mad for about nine nine to twelve days anywhere there is dust bean that is so smelly that he likes that environment crack now that's not normal he has been exposed to a realm the realm of unclean spirits and his behavior is according to the unclean spirits that are manipulating his mind by 12 noon we are going out you see people under the influence of crack one can just lie down on the road 12 in the afternoon only god knows when he will recover himself because the drugs that he uses opens him up to a dimension and as long as he's under the influence of those drugs that dimension becomes more real to him than the natural realm finally the the last point is very technical before i mention the point i need to explain something in the bible you know god is called in the old testament the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob is that true in that in that reality we see the power of inheritance in fact if you come